one of the things we um we brought up like a, a while ago was um with the blog post uh misunderstandings that people had and I was thinking of one of them just before I saw a lot of people misunderstanding what you were trying to do there sort of interpreting it as you saying this is what you should be doing with Linux people were saying yeah yeah this, exactly like, I don't have time to do this this like why why would I go and do this whereas that wasn't the the intention that you had with it yeah like my intention was something like okay like there are these ideological reasons there are these um practical reasons but like there is also this one the ascesis one like it improves you as a software developer and like we can argue about whether it truly improves or not but but still i am not trying to say that you should be trying to be the best developer out there like i am not saying something like you will be the best developer if you use Linux or stuff like that. Like I am just saying something relatively simple, like using Linux, like minimal Linux distribution will make you appreciate the sub components of the system that you are using, will uh, make your understanding a bit better, like make you think in a more programmatical way, not only about the work you do, like your development work, but also about your own environment, which you are operating on, mm -hmm. stuff like that. But uh, as you said, some people just understand, understood it. Like I was trying to um, convince people yeah, yeah. to be an ascetic or some right. If sort you want to use stuff. a, like, if you want to give that that theological view, you could say trying to proselytize your your idea to them. Like this yeah, is. You're trying to <laughs> you're trying to convert them to your your Linux religion. Yeah, I mean, I'm okay. Like whatever they use. Like I have a friend who is using GNOME like as his uh, main desktop environment, mm -hmm. and he's actually uh, very productive. Like, uh, and he also understands the things I am doing. Like he isn't like. He doesn't know what goes under the hood and stuff like that. But like for him, it's just a preference. Like he knows what's under the hood as well. Mm -hmm. And I think there's a value in this approach. Like, and it's so often overlooked aspect of using Linux, mm -hmm. the learning aspect. Yeah, this is one of the things that I as Linux gets more popular, I, I feel like having these easier ways to approach Linux obviously are good for that. But when those when those nice graphical utilities do something wrong, exactly. it can be very confusing to someone what happened. A good example that I saw recently, um, I was watching a video by Samtime, and he was trying out Ubuntu, and I guess he must have closed a terminal during an update process and apt didn't let go of the database lock so he tried to use the gui app center to install an application and it gave a giant warning saying uh dpackage.lock could not be retrieved or whatever the the warning message was basically it was saying that yeah. the database was there was a database lock and you couldn't do anything all but all he did was click install the application, and the application didn't install. The, the warning that was provided was very useful to someone who is experienced with Linux, who if they saw that on the terminal, you know, that would give them an idea of what to do. But if you're, yeah, yeah. If you're coming from a Windows or a Mac OS background, and you click install application, and it just throws this very technical warning at you, it can be really confusing what you're supposed to do with that exactly like i think the problem here is that you are making an abstraction to make things easier but you actually can't you are actually not able to hide the all uh underlying uh aspects of the thing that you are abstracting away mm -hmm. so it leaks like on one hand you have this window uh, application that you click stuff uh, install packages and so but then you click uh, when you close that window 
it still works uh, under the hood and it logs your um, package management man management files mm -hmm. so that you cannot install another thing through your terminal uh, and so on. But the window itself, like since it is designed to make it feel easy, like doesn't give you this understanding. And as you said, when things go wrong, like you just fail. I think it's just as important that how a program acts, like how it's e how e how much it is easy to fix it when things go wrong. Mm -hmm. Because when things go right, like no problem, okay, but in then things will go wrong someday or at some place. So mm -hmm. I think it's better to be equipped with the that low level level understanding to some extent so that when things go wrong like even if you use higher level tools mm -hmm. like some abstraction or so you can you still have some kind of an idea on what to fix for like i think nixos is a very bad uh operating system if you are not experienced with linux mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because what you are doing is you again... where, as you said, Linux, uh, Nixos is a very bad operating system. You took a kind of a pause there, <laughs> just had to laugh at that. No, no, <laughs> like I haven't still decided where Nixos or good or not. Obviously, I really like the package manager itself, like Nix, mm -hmm. and I also like the approach that Nixos is trying to uh, achieve, but I'm still like trying to decide whether it's uh it really makes sense to use it or not, mm -hmm. but like I'm using it and it's, it's fine so far. It was fine for me so far. But like the problem is that you are putting a layer, again, the same abstraction problem mm -hmm. between your system. Like right now, so you aren't the one who is uh, changing your configuration files, you are telling uh nix os to how 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 to manage those configurations and it does it for you but in the end what determines how your programs will work is the end result like the final uh configurations that you have and if you don't know how those things work in a way and want to change stuff like you won't be able to look what to look for in nix os either so if you are using an abstraction, I think it's best to know. It's best to know what goes under the hood as well. Like right. it's weird that people think like, oh, abstractions are about. Uh, oh, we use abstractions so that we don't have to know about the underlying structure and stuff <laughs> like that. I think this this is silly. Like you are assuming that you can achieve more stuff by knowing less stuff, but I don't think this is the point of abstractions. Like. I, I guess the point of abstraction is something like, okay, I know how to do this stuff. Like I have a brief understanding, but I just don't want to bother with this stuff. Right. Like achieving more functionality with less effort. Exactly. Like for me, the main benefit of abstractions is like that, because like, as you know, if you start to use too much abstractions, like even in your code and stuff like that, it can also make it harder to write like understandable mm -hmm, mm -hmm. code and stuff like that. 